Let's talk about strings and string methods. Alright, we find some back and tell you once more. And in this video, we're going to be talking about strings and string methods. So we remember a string over here. Let's say we have a string name and that name is going to be Kaupenjo. Let's just say for the sake of argument. Now, we remember that the strings were a little bit peculiar because when we had something like an integer, right, or a boolean over here, those were all keywords and they all turned orange when we actually made that data type. However, the string data type is a little bit special because number one, it's not written in lowercase, right? It's written with an uppercase S over here and it also is white. Why is that the case? Well, because strings are, like I said, a little bit special in this case. And what we're going to find here is basically a bunch of things that we can do with strings. That's going to be really freaking cool. So let's say we also have a string called occupation, right? And this is going to be YouTube in this case, and you're going to find, wait, 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 well, there's an R missing. Well, not to worry. What we can simply do is we can simply concatenate on the R over here. So we say occupation plus equals, and then the string R. And all of a sudden, bada bing, bada boom, we now have this concatenated at the end of YouTube, making this YouTuber, right, the occupation over here, plus equals the um, this assignment operator, of course, in this case, is going to concatenate it. And let's just look at it, right? S out, tap to autocomplete it, and we can say my name is, and then we're going to say name, and then, and, and I am a, and then the occupation. There we go. And if we run this, what will you find? Well, of course, it's going to say my name is Kaujo, and I'm a YouTuber. This is indeed correct, even though that's kind of crazy to think about. Well, we've seen pretty much all of this before, maybe not the assignment operator over here, but we've seen the concatenation, right, with strings, just putting a plus next to a variable is going to concatenate that into a, a new string, basically. However, if we have a string sentence right here, so a string sentence, and let's say this is hello, how are you doing, right? If we have something like that, of course, we can simply print this out, right? If we just print this out, nothing crazy is going on, right? How, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing pretty well overall, so that's pretty neat. But what if, let's say, we wanted to, you know, change the casing of this, right? Let's say we want to say, hey, our uppercase and lowercase, right? Maybe we want to change this a little bit. Well, what we can do is we can once again output this and we can say lowercase and then we can say sentence dot and then, well, we have to write this correctly. That's that's the first step, sentence dot. And then you get a whole bunch of different methods that you can choose from. In this case, we're going to choose this one without anything in the parentheses. We can simply hit the tab key to autocomplete it. And now if we output this, look at this. Right, the entire sentence is now going to be in lowercase. So the uppercase H over here turns into lowercase. And of course, we can do literally the same thing with uppercase. So what we're going to do is on the line, we're going to simply hit a control D and then uppercase right here. And can you imagine what this is going to change to? Of course, to not uppercase, but rather uppercase. There we go. And if we run this now, look at this. Now we're shouting, hello, how are you doing? Right, so that is very interesting indeed. And obviously there are tons of different methods. We're going to take a look at sort of a uh, the, the overview in just a second. But sometimes it might also be interesting to think about a sentence in or, or just a string and ask, hey, does it contain something? And indeed, it will contain something. So let's say once again, S out over here. Does it contain? And what I want to do here is I want to write R, but I actually want to have quotation marks around the R just because I think that that makes it a little bit more clear, right? Like, otherwise, we, we aren't, like, really showing it. If I were to just write it like this, it would just look at like this, right? Does it contain R? And it's like, that's just part of the sentence. So I want to actually put quotation marks on there. But wait, wait, wait. Oh, that, well, that doesn't work. How do I do that? Well, we have to put in an escape character, in this case, the backslash over here. And if we do backslash and then the, the quotation marks, all of a sudden, that turns orange and that will make them appear properly. So we can do the same thing right here. And now does it contain R? And that looks like this. So it's actually going to write those inside of the string. That's how you write the quotation marks inside of the string as well. And when we have this, we can then say, let's say, for example, sentence dot contains. And then this takes in a char sequence. Now, this is nothing else than a string. So we're going to say R, right? So does it contain R? Let's take a look, right? So let's go in here. And that is true because, of course, the sentence over here contains R. All right, interesting. Now, very interesting to think about. Does it contain hello? Now, here's a, a thing for you to sort of think about and absorb. If I write hello like this, what do you think is going to happen? Does it contain it or does it not contain it? Just go through the logic and think about this logically, right? So we have the string hello right here and we have the string hello right here. However, there is one is not like the other. 
right? Because one of them is a lowercase h and one of them is an uppercase h. So you could reason out both scenarios, right? You can say, well, I, maybe the casing doesn't matter for contains, right? Maybe it just looks for whatever the, the word is and it doesn't matter about the casing. Or you can logic out, well, wait a second. It has to be exactly the same. Otherwise, I would write, have to write this. Well, think about your answer, right? Logic it out. And then just sort of just sort of think about it. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, as long as you went through it logically and you're like, okay, I can I can see both both ideas, and then, then we'll we'll run this and we can see that it is false because it actually does matter, right? Sometimes it's very useful to think about what do I expect to come out of this, right? Like if I run this, what do I expect the output should be? And if it's the same that you expected, that's awesome. And that actually means that probably your program ran correctly. Now, if the output is something that you didn't expect, now we have prime real estate to learn something new. Because if something unexpected happens, that means that you may or may not have made a mistake or maybe there's uh, just an error somewhere in your code and that is uh, going to allow you to learn something new. And another thing to learn over here is replacing. And we're going to be replacing something inside of our string. So S out over here, I'm going to say sentence dot replace and what we're going to replace is a particular target. So we're going to replace hello. And the thing that we're going to place it with is howdy, howdy. Because why not, right? I mean, I guess we're we're moving south over here. So we're talking howdy, howdy. So if we run this, what's going to happen? Well, what we're going to have is we're going to have an output that says howdy, howdy, how are you doing? Now, next up, once again, when we think about the replace over here, well, we have a target and a replacement. Now let's think about this. What if we had another hello written inside of this sentence. What do you think is going to happen with a replace? Once again, this is one of those things where you test it out, you try it out, and you see. L let's reason that once again. Well, it's probably going to only replace the first hello, right? Because that's the target. Uh, otherwise, I might have to, you know, do something different. Or you can say, well, it's probably going to replace every instance of this hello that it finds within the sentence. Well, once again, take what you expect. Let's run this and let's see. And it's going to replace both instances of the hello. Basically, you can even see this if you hover over the replace, right? So if you hover over uh, some of these methods over here, there we go. Yep, there you go. It's going to show you a little bit of a sort of a cheat sheet of what happens. And it says it replaces each substring, meaning that it's going to replace every single instance of this. That's pretty neat. That's pretty cool. Finally, it might be useful to go in and uh, maybe have a certain character at a certain position, right? So maybe what we want to do is we want to look at a character. So that this is the char add method. We're going to output this once again. So we're going to say sentence dot char at, right? And you can see, boop, this one, and it takes in an index. Now let's take the index eight over here. And I'm going to count right here so you can see the, the carrot at where I'm at, right? So you can see the flashing one. And I'm always counting to the right, right? So maybe we can do put in something in the post over here as well. But basically, the age is going to be 1 and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what we're going to expect with the char at 8 over here is going to be a lowercase h, which is the eighth character in this. All right, so let's see the lowercase h. Oh, oh. Why would this be an O, you might ask? So you can see that instead of the H, it's actually the lowercase O right here that we have with character or char at eight. Why would that be the case? We can count once again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is 100% the eighth character. That is correct. However, aha, programmers start count at zero. Yes, indeed. So that means that the index of H over here is not one, it is actually zero. So if we count with this, once again, I'm going to count zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All of a sudden, it makes sense why this is the O. The reason why we start count at zero is just because it makes some math vastly easier. And that's just something that you need to consider and keep in mind. So any time, almost any time, especially in Java in this case, when we talk about index, like an index at something, then we will likely start at zero. And finally, after having all done all of this craziness, what we're going to have is when we output the sentence, well, of course, all sorts of things have happened. However, the sentence remains the same. Now you might ask, wait, what, wait, it remains the same? Yes, because every time that we've called a method on this, right, a two lowercase, two uppercase, uh, even contains, we're asking about this, we're replacing something, we have always created a duplicate or basically another copy of the same sentence and then modify that copy and not modify the original sentence variable right here. Very important. So the sentence itself is not modified. Very interesting indeed. 
We're going to have a output over here of a couple of lines, just so that it's sort of separated out in the console when we output something. And then we think back about string comparisons, because here there's going to be two very important notes that you will uh, need as well for the, um, for the exercise, as well as sort of just a thing to think about. So when we think about um, string comparisons, I've told you that you should use the equals, right? We, I, I'm pretty sure we've seen this before, but let's look at it again. So let's say we have a, a question here. What is your name? All right, awesome. And we're going to have a scanner. So this is going to be, once again, scanner with an uppercase S and a lowercase S, and then a new scanner system dot in. As per usual, of course, all of the code is available to you down below. So you can double check the GitHub repository, the gist, everything is in there. Let's say we have a string input, and that's going to be read in by scanner dot next over here in this case. So if we were to say the following, I'm just going to copy, copy this over. Uh, this is going to be, uh, it's going to make sense. Like I said, the co code is down below. If we take the input and we do the equals operator, it even tells us, hey, you shouldn't use the, uh, the string comparison with the equals operator. You should use the equals method right here. We can see if it's count then we're going to say, yep, with the equals operator. And here we say with the equals method. Okay, that's fair enough. Let's run this and let's see what happens. So if I were to very carefully type Kaumjo properly over here, right? This is exactly the same that it's written in here and in here. So it's definitely correct. Uh, uppercase K and everything is fine. If I hit enter, you can see we get a no on the equals sign on the equals operator, but an equals method that gets us a true. And that is precisely why you should always use the equals when you're using strings. However, that's not everything. Because now gets comes in an even crazier thing, right? Because now there's going to be another note, so to speak, on scanners and strings. Because when we want to, let's say, we have the following. I'm going to start copying over a bit, bit of the code because it's just to illustrate things. Right here, we're going to have, what is your full name, right? So now we're asking for the full name. And what we can then ask for is the following, right? We can say, hey, if the full name is Joe Kaumjo, then yep, it is Joe Kaumjo. Uh, and then we have the same thing, right? So once again, with the equals and the equals. Fair enough, but we know, of course, that this is going to work. So if we were to go into this program, we can say, well, the name here is Kaupenjo, and we're going to get a nope and a, and a yes, right? So there you go, nope and yes. And the full name is Joe Kaupenjo, right? Once again, making sure that this is written correctly. And obviously, that's going to give us a nope and a yes. However, it doesn't, because the second one over here is also a nope. And you might say, whoa, what happened here? What happened here? Well, because using next will not work right here. because there's another method that we can call and that is the next line and the idea is that when this next happens it will read up until the first escape character in this case that would be a space bar and then it will not read the space bar and anything after that it's just it's just going to stop right here and we can even see this if we were to just literally our input right if we say our input over here and if we just output our input right here, or yeah, output our input sounds a little bit crazy, but it is the case, right? After the next right here, you'll find this is going to be crazy. So I'm going to say Kaumjo, and then I'm going to say Joe Kaumjo, right? And immediately after putting this in, you can see that, boom, our input is just Joe. Well, isn't that interesting? That is indeed very interesting, right? But it gets even more complicated in, in, in a little bit, right? So of course, right now, what we could do is we could just change this to a line right here, right? That's absolutely fair, right? So we can say, hey, this is Kaumjo. And then, oh, well, what is that? What's your full name? I wasn't even able to, to input anything. Yep, because, and I know this sounds absolutely crazy, the next right here, it still has the enter that I, that I pressed over here sort of written inside of it. So this next line is basically, it still has something in it. And we're going to actually illustri illustrate this by using next over here. And we're going to have the same thing again. So I'm going to, copy the last bit of the code. Like I said, it's all available to you down below. Now, it won't work if we use next. So that's why we use, use next line. Fair enough. However, you can see, well, wait a second. This is the separator. And now we have le next line just like written in here just randomly. Why? Because, well, where did the where did the uh, spacebar count go? That's still in the scanner, right? So, so this is, we've seen that after this input over here, we have Joe written inside of the input, but the scanner still has this whole other thing, right? The, the spacebar calm Joe is still in there. So we can actually see this if we were to uh, output this, right? Instead, if we just output this and we run this over here, what we'll find is that Joe, this is going to be calm Joe first. Then we have Joe calm Joe, and you'll find that right here, look at this, it outputs 
the spacebar count control because that's the you know space to count control is is still in there. So we have to get rid of this by literally just calling this scanner next line over here without anything. Uh, so the remaining input sort of has to be cleared out. So do keep that in mind that that sometimes has to happen. I highly recommend you also simply play around with this a little bit and then you will see. Now, the final sort of uh, nail in the coffin over here is, of course, we're using the next line and then it will work. So we'll see. We put in Kaupen Joe. We'll put in Joe Kaupen Joe. And finally, we have Joe Kaupen Joe and we will get a nope and a yep again. And of course, we will because once again, the equals operator does not work with strings. I think this has been very clear now. However, the equals right here does work with the next line because that will read the entire line, including any space bars or space, uh, you know, space characters in this case. So this might be a little bit, you know, maybe too much in depth, maybe a little bit crazy. I highly recommend you once again, you get the code, you copy it over, put it in your own IDE, you play around with this a little bit see why it works, why it doesn't work, uh, do a bunch of different tests. This is one of the best things that you can do. Just play around with this. At the end of the day, you always have the idea of, while well, going back with Control Z, right? That's always possible. And also, you always can go back to any of the earlier versions as you can simply copy over the working code and then you should basically be fine. I highly, I highly suggest and highly urge you to basically play around with this a little bit and just see what you can come up with and try to understand this by by working with the code, not just like listening to the videos over here. And there we go. That is basically strings and string methods. And as a final sort of thing to uh, to keep in mind, obviously, if you write a string, so this is going to be a string over here, the sentence, right, the string variable. And if you then do the dot operator, there are a heck of a lot of different things that you can call, right? If we actually I'll go up here a bit. I think it's going to be a little bit um, better over here. There you go. Look at how many different methods we could call, right? There's so many different ones. Once again, just play around with a couple of them and see what happens, right? Like you're not going to really break anything. Not particularly uh, as a beginner. It's very, very important to just play around with this a little bit. All right, but that concludes this video right here. I genuinely hope you found this useful and you learned something new. And I'll see you all in the next video. So, yeah.